so good morning everyone and uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity so today i'll be speaking on uh, radiological imaging in oculoplasty it's a very vast topic but i would like to touch upon each uh, area so so the must need and nice to know areas so the armamentarium with an oculoplastic surgeon for diagnostic workup is mainly the ct mri and uh, in few cases the ultrasound which which can corroborate with the findings so i'll be discussing according to this headings the basic principles of radiological imaging when to request uh, the various imaging protocols and uh, interpretation in uh, some diseases and few intervention and procedures so the basic principle uh, of ct as we all know the x ray beams uh, pass through the uh, patient uh, body and depending on the tissue densities uh, there is attenuation of this x ray beams which are uh, detected by uh, some uh, detectors and then the computer generates the images according to the tissue densities and uh, they are demonstrated as uh, uh, iso or hyper or hypodense and in mri as we all know a uh, strong electromagnetic field is applied to which a radio frequency pulses are applied due to which the protons in the uh, uh, tissues uh, they uh, realign themselves and during this transition phase this t1 and t2 relaxation uh, concept arises and in ultrasound as we all know that uh, the sound waves pass through the tissues and then when they reverberate back Uh, the transducer uh, creates some electrical impulses and which are recorded as hyper hypo and anechoic uh, lesions so when do we request for these uh, imaging when we have patients with unexplained proptosis ptosis ophthalmoplegia or a patient with trauma and infective etiology inflammatory or a neoplastic etiology we request for radiological imaging so uh, we should also know the contraindications for mri which is uh, the Uh, if there is any metallic foreign body or in claustrophobic patients we should not advise mri so uh, regarding the imaging protocols which we should request uh, while during a ct scan uh, usually the slice thickness of 2 mm is enough for uh, orbit but when we are uh, dealing with a patient with any uh, orbital apex lesion then we have to order for a 1 mm slice thickness and uh, sagittal view in ct is required during orbital blowout fracture we have to look for some bone windows if we are suspecting any bone osteolytic lesion and contrast enhancement we have to request when uh, we are dealing with any vascular tumors or any cystic lesions uh, and uh, we have to look for the uh, we have to do some modification in the ct procedure like in orbital varix where the patient has to perform the valsalva maneuver and uh, simultaneous brain ct has to be done in cases of neurocystis acosis so while requesting mri we have to look for the t1 and the t2 weighted image now how do we identify this t1 and t2 is that in t1 the vitreous appears dark and the intraconal fat appears bright and in t2 the vitreous appears uh, bright so the other basic uh, mri image sequences are the fat suppressed image uh, the diffusion weighted image and mra where we are suspecting any pca aneurysm we have to do mra or mrv we have to do when we suspect any uh, cavernous venous sinus thrombosis so what is the concept of fat suppression so in t1 weighted image wherein the intraconal fat signal uh, is bright so we have to do a fat suppression which will allow for the better anatomical detail of the lesion and this is essential for all orbital mris and we have to order for this gadolinium contrast uh, because most of the orbital masses they are dark on the t1 and they will become bright with gadolinium enhancement so we have to order uh, we, uh, with the gadolinium contrast and this uh, if we do without fat suppression that will cause the pathology to disappear so we ha always have to request for uh, contrast enhancement with fat suppression so in uh, this image where we can see an axial t1 weighted image without fat suppression here the well circumcised uh, hypo intense mass is visible but after fat suppression and gadolinium enhancement the mass is clearly visible so what is the concept of flare sequence flare sequence means the fluid attenuation inversion recovery sequence this is useful in uh, the demyelinating conditions like uh, 
in uh, optic neuritis associated with multiple sclerosis. Here we can see these periventricular lesions can be seen uh, in cases of uh, multiple sclerosis. And the concept of diffusion weighted imaging means uh, the lesions which have tightly packed cells, they will show a restricted diffusion which is important in cases of orbital lymphoma. And in cases of orbital trauma where we have to look for the orbital blowout fractures <coughs> and uh, we have to go for surgical intervention, we have to plan for surgical intervention, the CT is best and uh, uh, MRI can be uh, uh, requested if we suspect a wooden foreign body. And uh, if we uh, suspect a keratococavernous fistula, then we have to go for a MRI. Otherwise, CT is the best option. And in cases of infective etiology where uh, orbital cellulitis or pre preceptal cellulitis is suspected, you, a CT will suffice. And uh, similarly, in this uh, child with uh, orbital cellulitis, you can see a subperiosteal abscess. In cases of orbital myocystis psychosis, uh, mostly uh, uh, in this patient uh, who was diagnosed with uh, hemangioma, she was diagnosed, misdiagnosed elsewhere and we did a MRI which was very inconclusive. And then we go, went in for an ultrasound which showed us colics and she was treated with albendazole and steroids and she recovered well. In cases of orbital inflammation like the uh, non-specific orbital inflammations or the thyroid associated orbitopathy or IgG4 diseases, we have to go for in a uh, CT scan. And if uh, we suspect a cavernous sinus lesion, we have to uh, request for a MRI. In this patient, like uh, the CT scan is showing, uh, the axial CT scan shows the lateral rectus uh, enlargement, uh, which is the myocytic variety of this NSOI. And in thyroid associated orbitopathy, we can see this extra uh, muscle enlargement Uh, these are the similar pictures with thyroid uh, orbitopathy. Uh, so uh, similarly in IgG4 related disease, uh, we can see this lateral rectus enlargement. And uh, this patient shows uh, a well-defined intraconal enhancing uh, lesion, uh, most likely a cavernous hemangioma. Uh, in orbital lymphoproliferative diseases, as we have discussed earlier, that will show a dirty retroorbital uh, area and a diffuse, uh, uh, diffuse uh, lesion. Uh, optic nerve glioma, uh, like we uh, discussed in the MRI before, it's a well circumscribed uh, hyper intense lesion. And uh, this is an optic nerve sheath meningioma, which shows a tram track appearance. And in this patient with uh, adenoid cystic carcinoma of lacrimal gland, here you can see a uh, 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 diffuse swelling in the lacrimal gland, which is there, we can see a bony erosion also, suggestive of a malignant etiology. Uh, in, it can detect also the orbital metastasis uh, with uh, uh, unexplained enophthalmus. And few interventions uh, and procedures are also done by ultrasound guided, uh, like in intralesional bleomycin therapy can be done, or intra arterial chemotherapy and retinoblastoma is done with direct ophthalmic artery uh, catheterization. So to summarize, we have discussed what is the must-know areas, that is the basic principles, when to request, which imaging protocol to request, and what are the contraindications. And uh, we should always look for uh, what, we should always know what to look for in the CT or MRI and how to interpret the uh, diseases. And it is nice to know the special views and scans related and the various interventions and procedures done. So to summarize, CT and MRI are complementary and we should interact with our radiologists to get the most information which is required for the diagnostic workup. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vigyan Panda. Uh, for the common ophthalmologist, uh, the patient is present with us uh, different, uh, just uh, swelling of the orbital area without any pain or we cannot uh, assess the agility uh, cystic or uh, form lesion. What were the, our primary investigative modalities? Either we order for the CT scan or we can go for the MRI with contrast of plane. Yeah, basically, like if you find out uh, any well-defined lesion, uh, just tell me what the proper steps to take. Like if you find out what the proper steps to take. Proper steps to take, then we have to go with the CT scan uh, as an initial choice.
Thank you.